In Lesson 12.5, you will use recursive rules with sequences and functions. So far we've studied explicit functions, where each term a sub n is defined according to its position n in the sequence. Now we're going to compare explicit functions and recursive fun functions. In a recursive function, each term a sub n is defined in terms of a previous term or previous terms. And in example one, we want to write the first five terms of the sequence. So in number one, we'll make a, a table of values in order to write the first five terms of this sequence in. So we have n and a sub n. And we're going to find five terms. So we'll let n equal one, two, three, four, and five. And we already know a sub one, it's defined. It's defined as one, so we have a starting place. Now to find a sub two, we'll take our nth term formula and we'll substitute two in for n wherever we find it. So we have a sub two is equal to a sub two minus one, which is a sub one, and a sub one is defined as one, so we have one squared plus one or a value of two for a sub two. Okay, now to find a sub three, we'll substitute in three for n. So we have a sub three minus one, that's a sub two, and we just found a sub two to be two, so we have two squared plus one, and we get five for a function value. Okay, and now to find a sub four, you can see the pattern. We're using the previous term, which is now five, and squaring it and adding one. So I'm gonna get 26 for a sub four, and then a sub five, we're taking 26 and squaring it and adding one. So we'll get 677. So there's the first five terms of this recursive function. Okay, now in number two, we'll make a table for our five terms again. We'll let n equal one, two, three, four, and five. And now a sub one is defined as two. a sub two is also defined as two. So the first two terms in this sequence are defined. Now we want to find a sub three, so we'll substitute in three for n wherever we find it in our function. So we have a sub three minus two, which is a sub one, and a sub one is defined as two. We have a sub three minus one, which is a sub two, and that's also defined as two. So we have two minus two, or zero, for a function value. Now we need a sub four, so we'll substitute in four wherever we find n. So we get a sub four minus two, that's a sub two, and a sub two is defined as two. And then we have a sub four minus one, which is a sub three, and a sub three we found to be zero, so we get a value of two for a sub four. So you can see the pattern again. We're using the previous two terms in order to find the next term. So we would take zero this time and subtract two and get a value of negative two for a sub five. And there's the first five terms of this recursive sequence. In example two, we want to write both a recursive rule and an explicit rule for the sequence. So let's start with number one, which is an arithmetic sequence, and let's write the explicit rule. Because we know that the nth term for this arithmetic sequence is equal to the first term plus n minus one times the common difference. So all we have to do is substitute in the first term that they give us of 15 and a common difference of five. We want to distribute and add like terms to leave this 
equation, this nth term rule in standard form, in linear form. So distributing, I get 5n, and I get negative 5 added to 15, or 10. So there's the explicit rule for this arithmetic sequence. And now to write the recursive rule, we'll say a sub 1 is equal to 15, and after that, each term is equal to the previous term, so a sub n minus 1 is how we'll represent the previous term, plus 5. So here's the recursive rule for this arithmetic sequence. The first term is defined, and every term after that is defined in terms of the previous term. Okay, and here, over here, is our explicit rule for that same arithmetic sequence. Okay, let's try it again with a geometric sequence. And the explicit rule, we know the nth term is defined as the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. And all we did was substitute in the first term of 4 and the common ratio of 1 fifth in order to write that nth term rule for that geometric sequence. Okay, to write the recursive rule, we'll start with a sub 1 equals 4, and then to get every term after that, we'll take the previous term, a sub n minus 1, and we'll multiply by that common ratio of 1 fifth. So here's the recursive rule for that geometric sequence, and over here we found the explicit rule for the same geometric sequence. In example 3, we want to write a recursive rule for this sequence. So we need to look for a pattern. And if you look uh, at this recursive rule, this uh, or this sequence, the pattern is to add the two terms and multiply by 2 to get the next term. If we add 1 plus 1, we get 2, and we multiply by 2, we get 4. If we add 1 plus 4, we get 5, and if we multiply by 2, we get 10. If we add 4 plus 10, we get 14, and if we multiply by 2, we get 28. So this is the pattern that continues through this sequence. So to write the recursive rule, we're going to have to define the first two terms. a sub 1 is equal to 1, a sub 2 is equal to 1, because in the nth term, we need to take the two previous terms, which are a sub n minus 1 and a sub n minus 2. We need to add them together and multiply by 2 to get each term in this uh, sequence. So there's the recursive rule. It has three parts. Iteration is the repeated composition of a function with itself. In number uh, 1 here, we want to find the first three iterates of f of x equals 5x minus 3 for the initial value x sub 0 equals 1. So x sub 1 is going to equal 5 times that x sub 0 value, which is 1. We need a place to start, minus 3. So x sub 1 is going to equal 5 minus 3, or 2. x sub 2 the second iterate for this function is going to be found by putting 2 in, that previous value, in uh, for x and simplifying. So we have 5 times 2, 10 minus 3, that's 7. And x sub 3, or the third iterate for this function, we'll find by putting 7 in for x and simplifying. So we get 5 times 7, which is 35 minus 3, so 32. So there's the first three iterates of f of x. In problem 2, we want to write a recursive rule for this sequence in problem 1. So we have to define that first term. We need a place to start in a recursive rule. So a sub 1 equals 2 is our starting point. And then after that, every term can be found by taking 5 times the previous term and the previous term we can represent as a to the n minus 1 power minus 3. So here's our recursive rule that will give us every term in that sequence.
Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 11 odd on pages 828 through 830 of your textbook.